As Christine just said, the email marketing firm MailChimp has suspended several crypto-related accounts, and one of the companies impacted is Masari. And joining us to discuss this is Ryan Selkis, CEO of Masari, a crypto research firm. Ryan, always good to have you back. So what is going on with this MailChimp situation? What's the status? What do you know about it so far? Well, we know that we're not the only ones affected, but other than that, we don't really know a whole lot because MailChimp hasn't communicated with us in any way, shape, or form. Uh, they just cold turkey cut us out of the matrix. Uh, no explanation, no email, no uh, no forewarning, no bill to access our accounts. So it's not even that the account has been frozen, it's that it's been deactivated and, and even the, the super admins on the account, myself included, uh, can't uh, can't get access. Um, and the irony is, you know, I, I actually started my personal newsletter uh, back in, in 20, late 2013 or 2014 with MailChimp. And, and a good number of those addresses seeded the, uh, the Masari um, MailChimp account that we have today. Uh, I can still access my personal account, um, but I, I can't uh, access the, uh, the Masari-related account. So this does look like it was some type of blanket action from MailChimp, uh, but there's just been really poor, uh, actually non-existent communications from the company on, on what exactly happened. And uh, and now, you know, we've uh, unfortunately been left scrambling a month ahead of uh, one of our, our biggest events of the year, Mainnet. Hey, Ryan, you 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 guys say you you're allegedly valued at like something like three hundred million dollars right now in your latest found, uh, uh, fundraise, but. I mean, doesn't that kind of give you a chance to, like, I don't know, call somebody at Mailchimp and say, "Hey, you know, we got we got a few com we got a comma or so in in our uh, in our subscription numbers. It's a few decimal places, you know. Like, hey, can you maybe help us out here? You know, we've been good customers. We 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 you know use your your service. I mean, is there somebody at customer service you can call, or you know, did you ask to speak to a manager, for instance, or? Uh, you know, uh, please, you know, I, I need to speak to a supervisor. I don't want to say you went all Karen here, but I mean, can you go all Karen on this? Well, I, I wish it were that simple. And and uh, we do have quite a few connections. And we're also one of the larger accounts, I'm sure, uh, on MailChimp, just based on the, the hundreds of thousands of subscribers that we have and, and, and the size of the community that we have. So, um, you know, this is a situation where, you know, they've, they've stonewalled and, and we're just in a holding pattern like anyone else is, that has been cut off. Um, fortunately, we have backups uh, of, of our uh, customer account list. We did lose you know, probably thousands of, of, of email subscribers, potentially, unless we get access to the account again. But we do save backups, and, and so that will make the, the porting over to new service a little bit easier. Um, but this is you know, just unacceptable in terms of the way that this has been rolled out and, and, and the communications that the company has had. Uh, with long-standing clients. It does seem to be crypto-specific, though, and and, yeah. uh, and and if we, there is a way for it, us to fast-track that resolution, then we will. Any, 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 of their, any of their competitors reach out to you? Yeah, sail through, anybody over there at Sail Through call you? Say, hey, uh, we'll take you. We've definitely had conversations with other female vendors, and, and we'll be migrating imminently so that we can get back on our, our regular uh, scheduled programming. We did see this statement from MailChimp. Uh, they said that in response to a recent attack targeting MailChimp's crypto-related users, we've taken proactive measures to temporarily suspend account access for accounts where we detected suspicious activity. While we investigate the incident further, we took this action to protect our users' data and then acted quickly to notify all primary contacts of impacted accounts and implement an additional set of enhanced security measures. We did not suspend accounts based on their industry. Uh, you know, I know you mentioned that they haven't really been communicative. Uh, I don't know if they communicated this message to you at least. And, you know, I, I wonder what can crypto firms do? Because crypto firms are often the targets of cybersecurity threats that Web2 can be difficult to handle. Well, if you roll something like this out, uh, there should be some type of uh, actual communications plan. We haven't received notifications from any of the super admins on the account and, and the account owners. Um, so that's just not true. It's, it's a, a botched rollout and, and it's you know unacceptable. Um, it's certainly done damage to our business during you know one of the highest uh, impact, highest ROI times for the newsletter, which is you know in advance of, of the, the big 4,000 person conference that we're gonna host in New York in a couple, uh, few weeks here. So um, 
I think uh, I, I don't think that their communications are are entirely truthful in terms of the rollout. Perhaps the motive for uh, the temporary suspension is uh, is is valid, and it is what they say it is uh, based on phishing attempts and and you know uh, some other um, nefarious activity from uh, certain users that may have hacked into their systems or, or hacked into specific client systems. But we have had no such issues. Um, uh, we take you know our own uh, operational security very seriously, and we certainly would have been very communicative with uh, the Mailchimp team uh, had they actually gotten in contact with us and been professional about this. So um, you know, I, I I don't really think that holds water. And, and in reality, this is the sort of thing that we're we're, we're trying to build around uh, in Web three. Uh, get get out of these kind of central uh, gatekeepers and, and get out of these systems where you can be shut off with the snap of the fingers based on uh, some unilateral and, and blanket decision. But uh, for them to say that it wasn't a blanket ban on an industry or, or temporary suspension of an industry, I don't think holds water because I don't know of anyone in crypto that still has access to their MailChimp account uh, above a certain size. All right. Well, Ryan, Ryan we got so many different there, but... insights and so many d different things. Um, it would be a huge disservice to our viewers to only talk about MailChimp on this segment. So, um, you know, Masari obviously has a huge trove of data and there's a lot of questions right now about the crypto market. So I'm just curious, like, what are you seeing? Are there any trends that you're seeing that maybe might not be that obvious? For example, you know, institutional versus retail, interesting, you know, geographical trends. I mean, what, I'm just curious, like, are there any trends that you're seeing in the data that you have about the crypto market that kind of illuminates where we are right now in the so-called crypto winter? Uh, well, I, I think we're still seeing a, a ton of activity and enthusiasm around um, Ethereum and, uh, and and the upcoming merge. Uh, I think you know, builders are still building, uh, and 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 that hasn't really changed. We're, we're seeing a lot of uh, kind of new projects launch, um, whether that's layer ones, other kind of DeFi or, or NFT related projects. But the momentum has certainly slowed, and I think um, uh, DeFi uh, being one of the primary use cases and, and kind of primary application uh, environments for, uh, for for crypto. That's that's going to continue to face some headwinds until we get. Uh, more regulatory clarity, particularly in the U.S. and Europe, uh, in terms of how some of these teams can operate in a compliant manner. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I I think we're we've still got a ways to go uh, in, in terms of the sideways chop. But um, as we saw in the drawdown, the first six months of the year, the recovery and uh, and any resurgence when it comes to narrative will likely be driven by the macro environments. Um, if we see continued high inflation, or you see. Um, continued uh, rotation out of dollars or, or into hard kind of commodity backed assets um, uh, like gold. And if Bitcoin follows uh, or if there's a, a, a good deal of momentum around the Ethereum merge and the disinflationary impact that the merge is going to have on, on that ecosystem, I think it's most of the momentum is going to have to be driven by uh, either the top two assets or an entirely new use case uh, and, and, uh, and kind of driver of momentum that um, kind of takes us by surprise, much like uh, we saw in, in DeFi summer and then the explosion of, of NFTs last year and, and so on and so forth. Every time it's a little bit different, but um, I, I think that the five to seven year outlook hasn't changed a bit. Brian, you mentioned the two words we hear all the time in crypto regulatory clarity. Um, I, I was just wondering if you could, for you, what exactly does that mean specifically? Like, where do we need regulatory clarity and what does that look like? And just, you know, more generally, you know, I know you pay a lot of attention to Washington. We've had these very high profile implosions, you know, UST, Celsius, Voyager, Three Arrows. Like, what, what in your view are the regulatory um, actions that need to be taken here? There's really three. We need some clarity on stable coins and how they're going to be regulated and, and integrated into the financial system. Um, and how do we do that in a way where the dollar can continue to be uh, free and, and, and a leading export of ours versus um, something that uh, becomes part of the surveillance apparatus uh, of, of the country and, and, and internationally? I think something of that design would, would, would re uh, really cripple adoption. So it's basically what we have private public partnerships with uh, some of these US dollar backed stable coins uh, like USDC, or will the US government ultimately go for a CBDC like design that they have a little bit more control over. And hopefully things are trending in, in the former camp right now and, and, and we'll see some favorable legislation, I think within the next year on the stable coin fronts. As to whether we get more comprehensive crypto legislation that, that outlines you know, whether the CFTC has dominion over many of these assets or not, um, 
I think that's more of a coin flip and, and maybe a, a, an underdog uh, if we get that in the next 18 months. There is uh, some hope that we will see some clarity in terms of like the CFTC's ownership over some of the, the top uh, base layer assets, whether it's Bitcoin or Ethereum and some of these other layer ones. Um, and then I think uh, lastly, we're going to need some clarity over um, the status of DeFi. So this is where the uh, safe harbor provision uh, that, the, that uh, Commissioner Peirce had, had outlined you know, a few years back and, and really has kind of stalled in terms of momentum. But if we can get some clarity on uh, how investments and in, in tokens of, of some of these protocols um, that are community governed, how they should be regulated, how you can uh, abide by the spirit of existing securities law and, and consumer protection laws, um, and come up with a safe harbor uh, apparatus or something that's a little bit more of a, a, a first principles fit for crypto. Those would be the three areas of, of, of focus. Um, the, the last, uh, I think, is going to take years to play out, which is kind of stemming from the tornado cash issue this week and kind of a broader question around privacy rights. Um, that's that's you know basically going to have to work its way through the courts because I, I think that the the you know Western governments, governments kind of worldwide, are going to continue to be very skittish about supporting. Um, or, uh, or allowing or, or not fighting anything that cloaks their ability to surveil the network um, and surveil certain types of transactions. Tornado Cash was just the biggest and most obvious based on the percentage of illicit activity that was going through it. But this really is going to come down to a constitutional issue. And that, that will take you know, probably until 2024, 2025 to, to fully resolve itself. So, Ryan, speaking of a tornado of cash, um, you know, I, word has it that you're going around uh, trying to raise $35 million for from a sorry valuation of about $300 million. I alluded to it earlier. That's a long way from when we were sitting across from each other at Black Rail Cafe in Hoboken. Just want to know. I probably should have hung out with you more back then. But what are you going to use the money for? Uh, and how's it been going with the fundraising? Where, where's the money going to go? Uh, you know, it's a lot of money to... to, to uh, to throw around in, for a media company and data company, but uh, you know, how, how are you investing in it? And you know, you, you got a million or two you could spare over here. Let, let me know. Uh, well, we don't comment on uh, market rumors and uh, never have. Uh, but uh, I, I will say, you know, we've never spent a dime of investor capital uh, and have been you know, very efficient as we scale to 130 folks. Um, so uh, going to continue to ship product for our customers, uh, scale into new areas, and uh, we are hiring uh, developers by the by the bunch load. So uh, working on a, a, a number of exciting projects internally, um, and uh, and going to continue to push the pace in terms of what our team is, is shipping and, and how we're pushing the industry forward.